Hey, Matt Stone from 180 Degree Health, and today I wanted to talk about kids and parents interfering with their kids' sort of intuiting, intuitive eating behavior. Um, we live in this strange world where there's all this psychological interference between a child and a child's normal uh, self-regulating mechanisms when it comes to food. Not only are they sort of have all these ideas reinforced about certain foods being um, good or virtuous, but they hear all this noise about foods being unhealthy and this and that, and they sort of get this sort of mild eating disorder from their parents who have mild eating disorders because we live in this sort of eating disorder world. And we know from studying uh, what happens when parents interfere with their children's eating, um, we actually see that that tends to have a negative effect. And here's a good example of something that's very common. The intentions are great, but because of the human brain and how psychology works, it doesn't always pan out like uh, all those good intentions, uh, you know, all the good intentions that the parents hope it would. Um, eat all your vegetables, and if you do, then you get ice cream. Well, what does that do psychologically? Well, it makes ice cream look like this great reward, and it sort of grandizes this, uh, you know, puts this ice cream up on a pedestal as this holy substance, and then it enforces that. Uh, reinforces that eating vegetables are not something that is enjoyable inherently in and of itself, but that eating vegetables is work. This is uh, something you do to earn your right to eat this wonderful food. So by telling a kid that you have to eat these vegetables to be able to eat your ice cream, it, uh, it, it sort of backfires because it, it's just like the psychology of giving uh, you know somebody a job to do and paying them money to do it they tend to not enjoy that activity when if they weren't being paid for it they might enjoy that activity here's a a study that was done that's very interesting to me that's a case in point is a group was given a game it was sort of a tetris puzzle like game one group was given this game to play the other was given a financial compensation for completing puzzles now the group that was given the financial compensation for completing these puzzles. As soon as they finish completing all the puzzles that they were required to complete, they stopped playing the game. There was no interest. Once the, the money was taken away, there was no interest in playing the game anymore. The group who was not, you know, they were just given this game, say, hey, play this game. It's really, uh, it's really fun. Check it out. They played this game. When the period was over, the timed period was over, they kept playing the game and kept making remarks about how enjoyable it was and how they really enjoy the game. Um, so one group who was not rewarded financially, who was not given any kind of reward, really enjoyed the activity. Those who were given a reward and had that kind of you know, positive reinforcement for the behavior that they were you know, act acting in, they actually didn't find any pleasure in playing the game. So that's how it is for kids, and kids are even more sensitive to this than anyone else because their minds are so much more simple and pure and unadulterated. And it's impossible for them to actually enjoy eating vegetables when they're told to be eating this, these vegetables as a form of work to achieve something uh, like ice cream. By the same token, it makes ice cream seem overly attractive when otherwise it would be just ice cream. So this may sound like a strange concept, but uh, you get some kids together and you practice this and it works remarkably well. A, a relationship that a child should have with food and an adult should be with the maximum amount of neutrality as possible. Because when you don't have these artificial stimuli attached to these foods and these bells and whistles and all these happy meals and all this psychological interference, then it's much easier to sort of enjoy all different kinds of foods for what they are. It's possible to enjoy a fruit or a vegetable without you know, giving it a stigma as being a health food and something that you're eating as some sort of sacrifice when, gosh, it would be nice if you were eating ice cream instead. Um, I do think in my own personal experience from just what I've witnessed with other people and also what I've experienced myself, as I've gone through this process over years and years and years is that 
the healthiest eaters are people who don't eat healthy because they learn that it was healthy to eat a certain way or this or that but that they just gravitate naturally to those foods and they basically eat those foods because of the way that makes them feel because of the way those foods taste and they actually enjoy healthy unadulterated unprocessed foods and uh, that's really what it's all about and when you're trying to prepare a child for the modern food environment especially it requires a specific kind of tool set and avoidance just does not work with kids when they actually have a chance an opportunity to have some candy to have some ice cream to have some of these forbidden foods they go crazy with them and that is very unhealthy that is a very unhealthy way to be going into today's modern food environment because there is so much stimulation there is so much in the food itself to make it sort of crack like and overly stimulating so of course every child is unique you can't apply one rule to all children but be mindful of the fact that there are subtle psychological things going on and your good intentions to have your kids eat vegetables or whatever you're trying to get them to eat instead of the ice cream or the dessert or the candy it may be backfiring and like I said it's not the proper artillery to gear up for the modern food environment for your kids when they when they grow up they have to be able to have whatever in the house and not be haunted by oh my god there's cookies in there there's cookies in there I got I gotta eat all those cookies I it's not healthy to not be able to keep your hands out of the cookie jar so to speak um, cookies shouldn't be so overly stimulating that you can't have them sitting in your house without you thinking about them that is the perfect epitome of an unhealthy relationship with food and I think it's people are capable of achieving a much much healthier relationship with food than that so anyways that's it for me Matt Stone 180 degree hell talk to you again soon